Welcome back. Well, we have Dr. Benjamin Montoya here, who's with Kaiser Permanente of Orange County. And it's been on all of our minds, the coronavirus. So I thought it was important to bring him on so we can learn about it and learn how to not get it. Well, thank you so much. There's just a whirlwind of information out there. And so I wanted to make sure that we had the right person here to help explain what this is all about. Uh, so thank you, welcome. Well, thank you for inviting me. And let's just start with what it is, novel, the no, no, novel or novel coronavirus. How is it pronounced? Novel coronavirus. Okay, and what does it mean? Well, the coronavirus is a type of viruses that we encounter uh, every season. Mm -hmm. And they're usually responsible for the cold and respiratory illnesses up to about one third of the, of the cases. Mm -hmm. Now, those are uh, common viruses that happen even here in the United States and in California. However, uh, there has been some novel coronavirus, um, which basically means there are new viruses mm -hmm. that kind of popped up. And uh, they usually uh, have been associated with, uh, uh, you know, coming from um, animal sources. Right. Uh, as you remember, there was the MERS um, uh, back early in the uh, in century. Mm -hmm. And then after that, there was the SARS. Well, now we have the novel coronavirus 19, which now is, is, uh, is, uh, is called COVID-19, mm -hmm. which is stands for coronavirus disease 19 because it started in the year 19. Okay. Uh, it was first found um, actually uh, at the late, uh, late December of last year mm -hmm. in a cluster of uh, pneumonia and uh, pulmonary infections in China. And that's how it became um, known at this time. Right, right. Now, uh, so people are a little worried because they uh, hear about how many people are affected in China, and then there have been people that have come here to the U.S. who have also uh, been exposed to the disease. So is it likely that it will become some sort of a pandemic here? Uh, well, it is hard to say because we don't know how this uh, virus is behaving, uh, is going to behave in the future. Uh, obviously, because it's new, uh, there's a new information every time. Mm -hmm. Now, here in the United States, we only have up to today about only 15 cases. 15? 15, one five. Oh. Of those, only one in Orange County. Oh. Uh, but again, uh, right now, I just wanted to let you know that the, the, the risk of acquiring this uh, illness or this infection here in the United States is low. Well, yes, I would imagine. I mean, we don't live in the same kind of quarters as, as China. I mean, we do have uh, much more spread out. So, I mean, I think that that could be a real situation if you have people in very small spaces like they do in China, which we don't really seem to have. Uh, how is it spread? Well, it's right now, like I said before, this is new, so we're getting new data every day. Uh, the main uh, uh, source of, uh, of spreading this infection is by droplet um, being, um, you know, uh, expelled by people when they cough or mm -hmm. they sneeze. Mm -hmm. And it is believed that it's basically the causes that um, when, when the droplets travel a short distance, and when people can basically breathe them in, mm -hmm. in that way, uh, acquire the infection in, the, in that manner. So just like the flu or the cold, I mean, the same kind of way, right? That is correct. Okay. It's a, kind of like, it's a respiratory virus. Right, okay. So when you compare the symptoms of the coronavirus to the flu, how similar are they? They can be very similar, um, but uh, the, the difference between this virus and the common cold and the common flu are those that the main symptoms are basically fevers, shortness of breath, and cough okay. for this particular novel coronavirus. Okay. Now, there has been some uh, possible sore throat, runny nose, diarrhea illnesses as well, but that's a very, it's a low percentage of people that have presented with this infection. Okay. Now, in, when you compare, the, uh, for instance, the, the regular cold, basically people will have like nasal congestion, Fever is not a main uh, prominent feature of a, of a nasal cold, uh, of a, of a cold. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can have natural congestion, sore throat, uh, and it's usually gradual. It lasts, it's more of annoyance than anything else. Mm -hmm. Now, compared to the flu, the flu can have similar symptoms as well, which mm -hmm. we're talking about runny nose, cough, even diarrhea. But with the, with the flu, it, it happens sudden, mm -hmm. and basically people become very sick. 
mm -hmm. uh, meaning they, they, they have my, muscle legs, myalgia. Basically, you spend the time a couple of days uh, uh, in bed right. uh, trying to recuperate from that. Right. Um, in essence, you know, it's very difficult to uh, make a, dis uh, a distinction between any of those respiratory viruses just in symptoms alone because they share all the common features. Mm -hmm. uh, for the perspective of this particular COVID-19 virus, the main feature that you need to think about is if you have been exposed to the virus or not. Exactly. So basically, risk of exposure is, uh, is the main thing that you can think about whether you have it or not. Okay, and, and as you mentioned, it's very unlikely or low that we have been exposed to that particular exactly. virus. Exactly. You know, okay. currently our, our public health department, we, and working in conjunction with the uh, CDC, uh, they, you know, basically having a very good uh, network of uh, systems and, and flow, and flow um, workflows yeah. in order to be able to contain this virus, identify uh, and, and basically uh, contain uh, uh, whoever comes out to be right. uh, positive. And I imagine that you are, are informed quite regularly about this information, uh, seeing your position. Well, yes, I look at, the, <laughs> I look at those websites uh, maybe two or three times per day okay. just to be informed also. And also we have a very close uh, partnership with the public health department here in Orange County as well. Perfect. All right, as we go forward, let's talk about some things that we can do to prevent ourselves from getting any kind of virus. Okay. Well, first of all, in regards to this virus, there's no vaccination mm -hmm. yet, and there's no uh, approved medication for this virus. Right. Okay. Now, overall, in order to prevent uh, any a viral infection, including the COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, you have to make sure that you basically have uh, prevent the spread of the, of the virus, okay? Right. If you're sick or if other people are sick. Now, first of all, uh, thinking about washing your hands, mm -hmm. okay, washing your hands, uh, but often mm -hmm. uh, 20 seconds with soap and water. Okay. okay, I actually like to sing the happy birthday song, so it went in my mind. <laughs> For 20 seconds. Yeah, don't sing it out loud because, you know, people are going to think that you're not, you know, well, okay? So that's one of the things that you can do. Another one is when you cough and sneeze, mm -hmm. make sure you cover your, yourself. Now, a lot of people tend to do this. Right. And then go around and maybe serve you some food or what have you. Uh, make sure that you use a tissue. Okay. And then dispose of the tissue right away. Okay. Obviously, if you don't have a tissue available, right. you should cover your, where you're, your right. sleeve. So is it like in your arm exactly, there? Exactly, yeah. in your arm. Okay. But, and then, of course, wash your hands after for that. Okay. Um, you know, uh, common things like uh, don't visit people when they're sick mm -hmm. if, if you can help it. I mm -hmm. mean, obviously, if you're a care provider, make sure that you use a mask and wash your hands often and things like that. Right. If you are sick, you know, stay home. Exactly. Stay home. Uh, don't spread the germs to everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't want to have that kind of sharing. Right. And um, also, but if you were to have to have to go outside, you know, your home because of medical care, make sure you wear a mask when you oh, go so visit you your doctors. Okay. Exactly. But that's it, only if you're sick. Exactly. Be and that, it does to prevent for people get catching your con your condition. Okay. Because I mean, I, there, I saw a lot of people in the airport and on the airplane who had masks on. Is that really going to do anything if you're not sick? That, at this point, like I said, there's no um, spread of this virus with, within our community, within the United States. There's no need to wear masks at this point. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, well, good. And any final thoughts? Yes, uh, final thought is that, um, you know, we have forgotten that uh, right now is uh, influenza season, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, the season itself is still going. You know, it's still going to be here for a few, for more weeks. Mm -hmm. And just to compare what's going on right now with the influenza, which happens every year, um, and I'm going to have to look at my notes sure. here. So there have been a 20, 26 million cases in the United States of influenza mm -hmm. and about 14,000 deaths okay. of that. Now, that has become kind of common nature for us because it happens every year. But don't forget about that, and don't forget that basically you need to vaccinate in order to prevent, because that's the most important way to prevent the flu illness. Perfect. Well, we had, uh, I had my flu shot right here on the show with some of the Kaiser Permanente people from Orange County, so I got the ball rolling, hopefully. Thank All you. right, well, thank you so much, because we really want to make sure that people understand that it's a very low risk, and uh, they don't need to panic and, and get up in arms all of this. So thank you so much. That is correct. All thank right. you. Remember, if you have any concerns about your health, you can always visit your doctor and they can explain more to you. But if you would like more information about this, you can always go to kp.org forward slash Orange County. We'll be right back.